Hey guys, Thaddeus here with Chain Breakers Garden. Uh, so today we are out here doing a little bit of harvesting. I've already done a good deal of it, but we're just um, coming through here and pulling off some of our um, zucchinis and squashes. Uh, we've got some pretty good luck with them. Um, it was a pretty good storm came through earlier, kind of knocked us back a little bit. I've been seeing some um, uh, squash and zucchini bugs out here, squash bugs. And of course, I'll tell you about the Japanese beetle too. But this is what we got so far coming off of five plants. Um, this thing is completely full, so um, I'm okay with what they look like. Well, not the, the crook necks, because they hide under the canopies of these so, so much, they're um, not as bright and yellow as I would like them to be. Um, so I'm just gonna prune one more for you guys. I gotta get to it first. <laughs> That's easier said than done. And I don't have any shoes on. I got just flip flops, which I built this thing. And the words of Tobe Chuku and the Wigwe, I big this I built this thing with nothing but Nike socks and Nike sandals. But today I don't even have the I don't even have the socks, so Google Tobe Chuku. Tobe Chuku and the Wigwe, by the way. Really you need a good harvesting knife for this man. I don't have I don't I, I left my knife inside. And it needs to be sanitized anyway. That's one. That's a pretty decent size zucchini. I'm just going ahead, coming through here. I left the doggone thing way over there. Um, and while I'm also in here, I'm checking for for squash bugs. I have seen some. Remember, the squash bug comes, does all their frisky business. But there's been a lot of that going on out here. Um, does all that frisky business at the base of the plant. Um, so they like to, they like a little privacy when they get busy. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying not to put my toes in the <laughs> in the shot. Ah. But you always want to try to cut ah, the zucchini at the at the crown. So you pull you up a good crown. And uh, I just took that one. I'm gonna go ahead and take take some even if they're not ready just because I want the plant to just don't get too obsessed with growing a big zucchini you know what I'm saying I don't know what I'm getting let's take a little cut there try not to rough the plant up too much get my get my pool also right, let's see that I need to do some um, pruning on our cucumber. Cucumbers too, they got a lot of blight in here. See that blight? I tried not to get too much water on them, but cucumbers are really fussy about water, man. They are really particular about it grown, but we've got some good uh, cucumbers coming in. So the bees are getting to them. I'm just cutting this open a little bit more. Uh, let a little, 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 little bit more air get in here. But I'm not all too concerned about the bees. I'm not sure if you guys had, um, have seen our latest short, but we got I'm not too concerned about getting bees in here. We've got that kind of... I got that thing down, good. I locked it down, man. Um, so, I'm going to get on out of here. I don't want to be before you all that long. Take up your day. Whew. True food for us, y'all. <laughs> that's a real, that's a real, my, my haul is, I can't, I should have brought another bucket. I didn't think about that. But, um, yeah, so. <sighs> Zucchini, the squash bug, um, of course, breeze at the base of the plant, do all their frisky business. I came out here the other day and there was just a bunch of frisky business going on, man. Not for them so much for the Japanese beetle and I don't see it over there though one thing that corn attracts is Japanese beetles and we didn't have really any last year but once all this corn popped up so came the beetles um, I used neem oil that didn't do a doggone thing you might as well just if you know what I'm saying so I've laid down traps for them and um, I've had to put traps down for them that's the only way we're gonna be able to you know curtail their growth um, I'm looking at the eggplant, y'all. 
Go ahead. Do your <laughs> Do your day. <laughs> Go ahead. But yeah, man, so it was just too much frisky business. It was just everybody was out here just getting it in and that is a no-no. <laughs> that that is a no-no for me. So um I put the traps down for them. Gonna have to come through the base of these zucchinis and swashers and put down diatomaceous reserve, not just for the zucchini beat the squash beetles, but also for uh, ants. I'm I'm cool with ants being out here for the most part until you start biting me. And when you bite me, and we now we got problems. And the storm came through here earlier, washed everything down. This isn't the first time they look like this. I've come through after the storm. And I kind of make some change. Look, 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 look. There goes Swash Beetle right there. For whatever reason, they're getting on my crook necks. I don't care nothing about the zucchinis, but the crook necks. I missed him. Where'd he go? Where'd that joker get off to? So I'm going to have to get that diet to make sure if I'm going out tomorrow and getting it. Down there at that base. I'm going to put the Nemo down there. I caught one. This is probably the one I caught, but the ants ran my butt from over here. And uh, there you go. There you go, right there. I'm about to harvest this one though, so I don't want you. That yeah, dog it. Nah. That's all we got off to. It's somewhere in there. Like they come they come here and they get busy at the base, man. So we've been lucky. I'm gonna just spray a little bit at the base. Um That's pretty decent. I don't know if y'all can see that. That's a decent one right there. Um I'm gonna definitely get that document reserve and put it down at the base. But I, I caught, that's the one that I caught early. I caught him, his comrade getting it in. And I couldn't get to him because the ants ran me up out of there. <laughs> so, it's, a, it's cool though, it's cool. Big payback's coming, baby. But yeah, so that's those are the critters we've been dealing with so far. And um, for, I'm gonna just put it like this, man. We will never not ever grow sunflowers again because they're saving our bacon. Um, they're taking a pounding from the from the beetles and um, Definitely giving the beetles something else to snack on and as soon as they eat one leaf dug under the the sunflower has more leaves coming out already, so it is um, They are just workhorses. I didn't know they were that good at doing that But it's just something we stumbled upon and it's working out in our favor right now um, So we'll definitely be growing them again. I also have an idea as I may want to try to use them as a natural trellis for my tomatoes because these things ain't going anywhere these steaks it might not go anywhere but it could and so i'm thinking about trellising them together why not you know because these are they are not moving like it rained earlier this day it rained earlier today and it was pouring down and um and um it was just uh they didn't budge they didn't budge, they didn't move. So thinking about just trellising them together, maybe next year. And because they're they're too far apart now, but next year we'll definitely be. What the heck is that thing? Is that a fly? Yeah, dog. All kind of stuff out here, man. <laughs> There's all kind of creatures out here, y'all. And uh I'm cool with most of them, except the slug. When I see a slug, my skin started to my skin started to wiggle. <laughs> but at here, I don't see one right now. But um, the damage from those beetles is—it's a—it's it, a—it's a crime before the father, man. So like I said, I put—I have no choice. Nemo didn't do anything, so I had to put some gnashing of the teeth, man. I had to put gnashing of the teeth. I had to put traps out there. Um, I have seen a deep reduction in them. Um, if you're gonna do the Japanese traps, I think you have to put them at least 25 30 feet away from the crops downwind But we have so many of them. I put them upwind and downwind. I'm sorry And if I catch them out here, then I'll, I'll deal with it. We have a watermelon problem <laughs> If y'all can see it, we have a watermelon problem and so I have to do something about that I, They never grown that good for me. So there's clearly gonna go what the lack the, the max is what like three or four feet that a vine can grow they're gonna hit the max, and so that is not something I was not prepared for. We've never been able to get them to grow this vigorously. So, of course, we've got watermelons already beginning to form out here. There's just some little tiny things, though. So you want to definitely come down your vine. I don't know where one is, but I saw one the other day. I took a photo of it. 
Now it's, it's disappeared. Oh, there's one right there. Um, you definitely want to trail that vine. You want to follow your vine and make sure that you take off other little ones that you may come across. Um, but here's what it is. I, I have no idea as to where it's going to start at. And so, and that's only if you want to get like mammoth watermelons. Like if you want to do, you know, those huge county fair kind of, you know, watermelons. But I, I have no intentions on wanting to raise some, get some that big. That do me no good. But I have seen it. There is an induction in the in the beetles. There's a couple of them over there. And um, let me show you a photo. Let me get you up close. Man, we've been going to war, man. They're just tearing up my corn. I hate that. I hate that. Here's one. There you go. That's one. You see how they just eat the silt from the corn? Ugh! Son of a... Made me... PG show. Hey, check out these, man. <laughs> these are ground cherries. These are little ground cherries I bought for y'all. Uh, well, my friend gave them to me. And yeah, man, they are behemoths. They are monsters. And look at our pineapple station. This wasn't supposed to be a tour. This is just supposed to be about, supposed to be about harvesting. But the pineapple stage is taking off. But we got a melon problem. So, uh, But everything that's growing within the melons, though, is growing phenomenally now. So I feel kind of confident. I'm not sure if you guys follow us on Instagram. But I feel kind of confident now. And everything that's growing around them. So these okra, I'm not sure if they're going to get any taller. But they look beautiful. So... They're definitely getting the benefit of having these watermelon beneath them. That's allowing them to retain moisture uh, at their base. Campaign plan, y'all. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I had to, I did, <laughs> I read up on it all winter, man. So, <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay, I'm gonna try it. And it, it is, it's, it's, it's a phenomenal thing. It's phenomenal, man. I'll, we'll never go back to not planting like this again. Um, the fact they're doing it over heavy in Cuba. And once I saw that documentary, the folks doing it over in Cuba, and due to they can't get access to pesticides, I was like, okay, they own something. He feeds an entire, I think, an entire city off his one farm. So, um, phenomenal, phenomenal. So we just we tried it, and it works over here. Like I said, the the um, the sunflowers they're working as well as a companion. They're just keeping everything off. You guys don't see Mr. Fig, Brother Fig, and and uh, Sister Laverne in the back now. But um, they're working phenomenally. I we harvest as much as the arugula that we're going to harvest, and now I'm letting everything up from the arugula file go to seed, so I can get the seeds from the arugula. That's a monster. And so once they've gone to seed and give me the seeds that I want, all that'll be chopped down. Um, and a bunch of other experiments going on down there. But that's it for today, guys. I hope that uh, the atmosphere that you're moving, that you're building, in, and that you're growing in is something like God. I pray you and your family remain covered. And we'll get it again some other time, y'all. We are, it's strange. We don't have much to do out here anymore. Uh, it's a weird feeling. Just coming out and just pulling stuff. So, is that a squash beetle? There goes a, a zucchini beetle right there. A cucumber beetle there. But like I said, it's a strange feeling, man, to come out here and not have, get your tail out of here. God, <laughs> It's a strange feeling coming out here and not having anything else to, to plant. Uh, that's it for today guys um, thanks so much for watching like, share, subscribe hit that notification bell for us yo, we went over 200 we've kicked us over 200 followers I can't thank you enough for that we're growing, you're the reason we're growing you're the reason our videos are getting recommended um, and so I appreciate you man and my family and everybody from us here at the garden man we appreciate you uh, we're trying to grow something we're trying to do something different you guys are coming along with us on this journey and I can't appreciate you enough for it um, it's great to be around passionate people like us that um, that care about this and that was not actually that was a ladybug oops sorry <laughs> but she already she's still flying but um yeah so uh, thanks guys